This is Adam Gusso from Modern Blues Harmonica. Every year about this time, um, coming to you in late December of 2021, I get the urge to sort of go back to basics. And come up with a new way of teaching raw beginners like you. And I'm reaching out to you, somebody maybe who got a harmonica for Christmas, who decided 2022 is going to be the year they're going to learn. Every, every year about this time, I, I, I figure I'm going to find a new way of doing it. And so I want to convince you that I should be your harmonica teacher. Now, I'm going to give you some examples of the kind of thing that moves me as a blues harmonica player, and maybe this is something you'd like to learn how to play. So maybe I can help take you the first few steps towards this kind of thing. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that makes you want to play blues harmonica. How about this? <laughs> no? That kind of thing? What about this? This was the song that got me going. I'm 63 years old, this got me going back when I was 16, when I first picked up a Honer Marine Band harmonica. James Cotton, this is a song called Creeper Creeps Again. Let me see if I can do the first part of this. And do I sound like I'm talking more quickly now than I was at the beginning? That's what blues harmonica playing does to you. It pulls the passion out. Here we go, let's see if we can do this. Ah, uh -uh, gotta practice. <laughs> Does any of that sound like the kind of thing that you want to learn how to play? What most beginners want to know is how long is it going to take me to get from like know nothing about the harmonica to actually being able to make some bluesy sounds. And the answer is that if you come along with me at Modern Blues Harmonica and you start with one of my beginner specials or beginner deluxe packs, wouldn't start with the, the huge the huge one, the one that has everything I have, that's not the, probably the right place for most people to start, although some people do do that. Um, but it's expensive. I would start with something that's sort of, that's guaranteed to get your foot in the door. I've sold thousands of these packages over the 15 years that I've been doing this on YouTube. And they help. Um, so what's it going to take for you to get there? So number one, how often should you practice? Well, you should practice every day. If you're a true harmonica player, you, you don't need me to tell you that because you're going to be playing every day. It's not practice. It's going to be fun. It's going to be you focusing and doing it. 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes in the evening would be a good way to do it. Let's start right at the beginning. You need a place where you can play and let out that demon, that monster, the harmonica monster inside, where nobody's going to be overhearing you in a way that could lead to you being inhibited. 
things. Principle number one, and this is not where any other blues harmonica instructor on YouTube was going to start, but I'm telling you that if you're worried about people listening to you, if you're worried about people judging you, if you're worried about people saying you don't play the harmonica or, oh, you can't bend a note, that sounds horrible. All that's going to be very destructive. You don't want that. So you got to figure out where's your woodshed. What's a woodshed? Woodshed's a place where Charlie Parker, most famously in Kansas City, went to a jam session before he was the bird Parker. And he couldn't play, you know, quite well enough. And somebody said, you know, go home. He got his butt kicked on the bandstand. So he went to the woodshed literally in the backyard. That's why jazz musicians and blues musicians talk about going to the woodshed. You need to find that woodshed for you. So that's number one. For me, it was often a park outdoors where I just wasn't worried. I was walking just walking along and playing but you develop some bad habits when you're always walking your tempos may be a little variable so try to put some thinking into that maybe it's the bathroom in your apartment maybe that's what you do we bring a metronome and a an iphone or something along so that's number one number two what harmonica do you want? You got to get a harmonica. Now, I, I, I am an official endorser for Honer. I have been using, as it happens, the Honer Marine Band. You talk to pros, they'll say, well, great harp. Honer, great company. There are other, a handful of other top shelf companies like Seidel and, and Suzuki and, and Herring and, and any of, any harmonica by any of them is going to be better than the, the option, the sort of other thing would be the sort of plastic harmonica that you get in your um, in your stocking. That's not a good idea. So start with a professional grade instrument. What makes it unusual, a marine band, but any of the these things, is this is what I started on and it's what I'm playing as a professional on, right? So it's it's rare that a beginner's instrument, a starter instrument, would also be a professional grade instrument. So think about that. What key? I, I would recommend starting with a C, although you might also think about starting with a D. Either of them is going to be fine. Some people have a tough time playing certain notes on the C that they can immediately play on the D. But C is good because a whole lot of instructional stuff is in the key of C. When I started this YouTube channel, well, my other YouTube channel, back in 2007, I played on a B flat. I played everything on a B flat. But here's the thing. If I'm teaching you something on a C, and you, have a B, you only have a B flat or a, an A or an F, it's not gonna, notes are not going to sound right. Even though, once you've learned the riffs, The, the relative pitches are exactly the same. In other words, you can translate a riff. That's what makes harmonica great. Once you learn a riff, you can play on it on a C harp or a G harp or a D harp or an A harp. Start on a C harp, I would suggest. If you want to get two, I would get a C and an A. You want to get three, C, A, and D. You want to get four, C, A, D, and F. You can go to my website. I'll try to link in my frequently asked questions, like why start with those? Well, there's actually a reason for this. C because what we do as harmonica players when we play blues we play cross harp for you this is a mystery what is cross harp well don't worry about it too much now just know that I can play this C harmonica in the key of C play all the nursery rhyme stuff but that's not how people play blues they go from that four blow which is the root in when I'm playing a C harp and C and they go down and they start on that G. That's how they play blues. They go what's called cross harp, and they play the harp in a slightly different key. It's a related key to the key of C. It's the key of G. It's the dominant of the key of C. Don't worry about dominant music. Don't worry about this stuff. So, key of C harp. Okay. You got your woodshed, so you're going to practice. You got the harmonica. How do you hold the harmonica? The truth is, it doesn't matter a whole lot when you're first starting, but pretty quickly it becomes important. When I, when I say it doesn't matter if you want to hold it like this, if you want to hold it like this, I hold it in my left hand, and I'm a lefty. Righties hold it in their left hand. People who hold it in the other hand, their right hand, sometimes they turn it upside down. Don't ask me why they do that. Okay? Well, they, there is actually a reason, because because they want the number one. Take a look at your harp. Get a harp. Take a look at the numbers. You see that? One through ten. So your harmonica is set up with ten holes. Each of those holes has a draw and a blow. That's what we call the draw and blow or draw and suck. Suck and blow. So, take your harp. Get that four. You're going to sound like this. I'm going to sound like this. 
So right away, you confront the mysteries of embouchure. By the way, who am I? Who, who, Adam Gusso, you can Google me, that's fine. I've been doing this thing on YouTube longer than anybody else in the business, except for Ronnie Shellist and John Gindick, who are both here a little before me. I was here in February of 2007. I've been doing this for a long time, teaching on YouTube, but I've been playing for a long time. For many years, I played with part of, as part of a duo called Satan and Adam. Maybe you saw the Netflix documentary, Satan and Adam. You can go to Amazon, stream it if you want. Um, I joke that Robert Johnson said, you know, Robert Johnson sold his soul to the devil. I played with the devil for 30 years. No, I played with a man named Sterling McGee. I was a Harlem street musician. I was in U2's Rattle and Hum many years ago, briefly. That's who I am. Uh, I'm a harp guy. So how to hold the harp? Now, number one, by the way, the hand motions which I'm making are not how I get those funny bluesy sounds. What are those? Well, we're getting ahead of the story, but maybe I'll tease you in a little bit by... Those are what we call bends, and those are the key to blues harmonica. There's a number of keys, including having a good embouchure, including having a good chord sound, having a big open sound, having vibrato. And by the way, if I seem scattered, I'm trying to kind of give you a... It's almost like the chef's taster's choice. Um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, something la bouche. Like it's like a, I'm, I'm trying to give you a little playful sort of sense of what's out there. A sampler from the blues harmonica teacher um, of what you, where you might go and what some of the things that you'll be thinking about and focusing on are. Um, again, I'm always. I've, I've got lots of other videos. This one's um, it's a little bit different. I want to kind of pull you in to my world and my way of thinking. Blues harmonica players are a little different just the way trombonists are a little different. So what I'm doing is I'm finding pitches. This is what blues does. It finds pitches between major and minor. It finds ways of flatting notes in certain ways that also it uses to sort of vocalize. Like, ow! And a lot of the reason it's doing this is because back in the day when people were inventing, and basically African-American men in the U.S. South were inventing this new style of called blues on a harmonica, they were listening to the people who were singing. And they said, you know, if I play this, if I shift down from C to G and make that my, the note that I'm coming, starting and coming back to. Whoa! That's somebody singing that. Not a very good singer, but I can hear the pitches the singers are doing, and that's all I'm it's recapitulating the way that those early blues harmonica players created the music. I just played what's called the blue third, so if you come along with me, you move into sort of serious first stage blues harmonica playing, blues harmonica studying, we're going to get you fairly quickly into that blues tonality. That blue third's a hard note to play. <laughs> Baby, please don't go. And one thing I would suggest if you're looking for a blues harmonica teacher is make sure that that teacher knows where that pitch is, knows how to get it right, and can teach you what they're doing. Don't trust somebody who goes, oh, horrible. It's not blues. That's sort of rocky. How to hold the harp. What am I doing here? I'm taking these two fingers. I'm clocking them right in there. Equidistant. Notice top and bottom the same. Don't do this. Wrong. Right. I'm going to put this finger down behind. To make sure, get, 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 take a photo of yourself and do that. Down behind, okay. What do I do with these other two fingers? Well, I kind of, I can kind of curl them down. Don't really matter, but this is actually a stable platform right here. These three. All right. Now, what are you going to do with your lips? Well, I said that you're going to play. 
you're going to try to narrow your lips down and get that four blow. This is like beginning lesson. I'm going to go, what's the difference between yours and mine? It's actually very simple. This is one of those things where if I were a certain kind of um, highly capitalized, you know, YouTube uh, guru, I would sort of say amazing secrets of the, yeah, I started that way, but we're a long way from that now. So the truth is, we, what we're doing is we're puckering. It's called puckering, and you're going to become a pucker player first, although there's another school of harmonica playing called tongue blocking, and I do that too, and you should learn that. You're going to start out, you want to pucker. So pucker, like you're going to kiss somebody. Your lips are, mmm, whatever you got, whatever you got, make them fat. Uh, uh, uh. Right? You pucker them, and then you put the hole, you put your lips, the inner part of your pucker should be about as wide as that hole, that four hole, right? And then if you do that, it's perfect. Put, put, push the harp towards you. So that's where you start. And I'm going to tell you what you should be doing. Forget about all the blue stuff right, right away. First thing you need to do, and then I think I'm going to just end this and tell you to look at links in the, in the video description. What you need to do is you need to get this harp and you need to simply go make a major scale going up from four blow to eight blow. That's a challenge. It's a challenge because, well, you go four blow to four draw. Now for, for, for a brand newbie newbie, brand new newbie, just that's hard. You gotta make it so it's easy, which means you have to work really hard on getting that embouchure correct. Then you, meet, you move over one, and when you're a beginner, when you're a new newbie, just moving the right amount to five is incredibly hard. I'd suggest you start with just that. Go up, and then go down. Four blow, four draw, move over. Five blow, five draw, five blow, move over, four draw, four blow. That basic creation of sort of, that's your, that's your, you're putting software in there, but it really you want to kind of hardwire so that stuff like that becomes much easier. It's very hard when you start. And it's going to sound for most people, most new newbies, I like that term, I made it up today, so you always come up with something new. Most new newbies, sound more like that. They don't even know how far to move over. The, the, there's not one note. It's more like a double stop, a couple of notes. The moment you can actually do it, then try to coordinate it with a beat. Ah, and what I notice right away is the question that I get from time to time, should I be breathing all through my mouth or is it okay if I breathe a little bit through my nose? Now the answer to that is 90 to 95% of the air should be going through your mouth because if it's not going through your mouth, it's not producing sound on the harmonica. So why would you let 5 to 10% of the air go through your nose? Well, number one, you don't do that when you're bending, but you're nowhere near bending. Why do you do that? Well, it's, it's so you don't overfill or underfill. It's so you don't get too full of air or don't or don't have enough air. It's to sort of help maintain, and this is a really challenging thing early on, a kind of equilibrium between sort of the amount of air you're taking in and the amount of air you blow out. So how would you know if you're blowing in or drawing in through your nose or not? Well, you'd hold your nose. Then no air is going through. Now what's interesting is when you do that, and I, I haven't done that in years, but when you do that you realize all of a sudden that something inside you actually wants to breathe a little bit through your nose. So it's okay to let, a, in fact it's a positive good to let a little bit of air through your nose as you're breathing most of it through your mouth. Is that okay? Does that? I think that's sort of the first lesson here. This is, this is different than things have been in the past.
Have I tempted you? You gonna learn harmonica this year? All right, so, uh, well, go back through and with your pen, you know, write down some notes. Hopefully there's something that the good doctor's given you that's useful, If but here's what you need to know. I've got probably 900 videos on YouTube on this channel, which is my new, newer channel from 2015 on, my legacy channel, which is where I started this whole thing. Go back to Modern Blues Harmonica, that channel, 2007. I'm a legend. They tell me. I don't know. Legend usually means you're about to die, but I ain't about to die. I'm still trying to get it right. God, it's hot in this car. Coming to you from Oxford, Mississippi. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Yes, you may say Merry Christmas on this channel. Um, I'm a half Jew, and you can say Happy Hanukkah, too. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an equal opportunity, uh, equal opportunity non-believer. Um, but I'm also a New Ager, Course in Miracles brothers and sisters okay so you've decided that I'm a kook you want to move on there are lots of other great harmonica teachers and players my friend Jason Ritchie my friend Ronnie Shellist Liam Ward Tomlin Lecky even John Gindick is out there so everybody has a channel these days Jake knows harmonica you can go anywhere you want but I'm, I'm telling you what what's the you, you want to stick with this guy this guy knows how to win for you okay um, check out the, the links uh, in the extended video description. I always forget. I always forget because I'm not a true, you know, not a, a corporatized YouTuber. Subscribe! And then when that, something new comes out. But I, I always forget to say that. Okay, we're done. See you down the road. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye.